A very good morning, good evening, and uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls. Thank you for tuning in to the Life uh, Signatures Radio. It's another day, it's another opportunity for another episode. We are in the middle of a series. We're talking about your personal glory. We're saying that the human race in totality, or to us together as a colossal race, we have our own glories through the generations. But that doesn't negate or that doesn't shield us as as individuals to have our own personal glory. These uh, episodes are always on this podcast and we're always talking about purpose, productivity and resilience. It's a daily show on those three subjects. We're teaching, we're inspiring, motivating. So that's where we are doing. That's what we are doing. It's a virtual incubator for all that stuff. If it makes any sense to you, somebody told me I've been listening to you guys for quite a while now and the only problem I have with you is that you don't have a donation button and uh, I've just included that in the notes where you see this this is just a donation button if you're coming from Africa you can click on that particular button if this blesses you one way or another it's not not an obligation and you can donate so today we're going to go and continue talking about the fourth pillar of our personal glory you really want to stay tuned to this Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. We are going to start by doing a recap and we said in the first episode when we we're talking about this remember we're talking about the six pillars six pillars propping up the fullness of your glory what do you need to really show up in the face of the earth as a glorious human being the first thing is uniqueness each and every one of us is unique in one way or another i can never be glorious in your uniqueness I can never be glorious by copying what you're doing, copying your passion, copying your uniqueness, copying your methods. I can't. Of course, we can borrow as many brains as we can, like uh, one of the uh, presidents of the United States of America said. That's okay. We can borrow. We can learn from one another. But I've got to remain. I've got to remain authentic. I've got to remain unique. I've got to be faithful to my difference. The moment I start trying to be somebody else or something else, I dilute my glory. I cannot show up. I cannot be glorious if I do that. That's the first thing. But then the second thing is to be useful. Glory is about doing something, impacting this world, making a contribution on the face of the earth, one way or another. There is no way. You can take that to the bank. There is no way. Absolutely no way. You will be glorious by doing nothing by not being useful this is is not going to happen you can take that to the bank it's not going to happen sitting back doing nothing and that's what we see in this generation the generation today is just sitting back and taking photos and looking for likes that's not being useful being useful is when you go out there using your difference using your usefulness using your difference to change this world to make a make a contribution to make an impact in the world when you do that Your glory starts shining. The third thing we talked about yesterday was about fulfillment. Looking for ultimate fulfillment, not for fleeting fulfillment. There are different types of fulfillment. Like when I buy a car, I feel fulfilled. Until I start driving down the road and I see, hey, there's a guy with a better car, bigger car, faster car. It looks more chic than mine. 
and I start looking at you know when am I going to get a car like that or get a car better than that one. it's fleeting vain glorious to look for this cheap you know uh, temporary fulfillments here and there but when you look for ultimate fulfillment what is ultimate fulfillment it is the fulfillment that comes when you are doing that which you are called to do that which you are passionate we're going to talk about passion today what you what you're passionate about that which transforms that which contributes that which makes a difference on the face of the earth that is ultimate fulfillment nobody can pay you enough it's what they call psychic income what is psychic income psychic income is the fulfillment or the uh, the what do they call it it it's the it's the the payment that you get from seeing this world better because you lived and you did something towards it when a teacher primary school teacher meets someone who has become a ceo you cannot pay that teacher enough for that particular transformation that he contributed or she contributed to that child's life that is ultimate fulfillment now ultimate fulfillment is never found in things it is found in doing in being useful if in fact it is found in you expanding the utmost potential that you've got that's where ultimate fulfillment comes from so if you're if you're born to speak you will find a fulfillment from speaking if you're born to code you find your fulfillment from coding if you're born to cook you're going to find your fulfillment from cooking if you're born to play and born to shoot baskets you're going to find fulfillment in there and i know that some people normally say oh these things of talking about passion gifts and talents i just look for someone something that is going to make me money and i make money you will not be fulfilled with making money how many times have we seen people with loads of money committing suicide you are not going to be fulfilled there ultimate fulfillment is when your passion your difference your skills your gifts your talents they meet at a problem and they create an impact and a contribution you can never be paid enough for that and it's let me tell you something it is really addictive you can never outgrow it you want more and more and more today let us look at the fourth thing that uh, you should look at the fourth thing that is going to make you to be glorious it is passion now let me just lay something some groundwork here even as i reiterate these things each waking day i have started to realize that just how much i take life for granted let me explain after starting to think meditate and write about this uh, subject matter and talking about this subject matter of the fullness of glory i am forced to look for uh, at life from a totally different perspective you know what i realize i realize that for the most part we live routines i mean we live a life of routines each working day is probably the same as the previous one and each month is probably the same as the the previous month and probably the year if we're not careful each year ends up just like the previous one there is no trace of glory anywhere in the year and it's come to an end and we are gleefully you know celebrating and saying oh remember we want we've crossed over to the new year what was the glory of the year there is something though that it can give you an indication that you are on the right track and even if you are living a routine life because routines are also important and they have their place and i'll come back to that shortly but let, let, let's just do uh, 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 this let, let, let's go ahead and, and talk about the the, the 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 pillar of passion there's the fourth pillar of passion which is uh, i call it the unction the earnestness in our hearts let me tell you something all of us have been created with an earnest within our hearts that's why you find someone passionate about art which you couldn't care less someone is passionate about governance you couldn't care about uh, less about it someone is passionate and honestly passionate about the environment you couldn't care less about it someone else is passionate about computers another one about children another one about building and construction another about podcasting someone else about electricity would you believe it someone else will be about water this honestness is the unction it is the 
it is it this passion inside of our heart is an indicator of where we're supposed to spend our lives and our efforts on in this life other than just surviving living a life of survival that's where our our honesty is supposed to be the engine of every action the engine sorry the engine of every life is action is this honest it's this passion action is the earnestness of the passion of the noble spiritual force that connects us to something that matters, something that we care about. Uh, you see, the earnestness in my world is different from the earnestness in your world. And you can see this earnestness in any world changer. Right now, we, we're looking at Elon Musk as the man who is the richest man in the world. There is an earnest in him about rockets, about mass, about science, about all these things. There is another man called Jeff Bezos. There is an earnestness about marketing and distribution in his life, digital distribution. There is Bill Gates. There was an earnest in, in his life. I mean, there is not a man or a woman who is glorious that lacks this component of earnestness, of passion, and of action. None. The engine of every life is action. You see lots of passion on the faces of people that are making this world a better place. They are, they, they are exuding the fullness of their glory. You will not see one without passion. See, Howard Thurman said something of the, of the nature that do not ask what the world needs. Ask instead what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. A certain preacher was asked uh, some years back. Uh, I can't remember the name of the preacher. Maybe Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, I don't know. He was asked, oh, how are you very successful? Why are you so successful? What, do, what can you attribute to your success? He said, I, I normally set myself on fire. And people come to watch me burn. Now that is passion. He talks. About, he's talking about passion. The opposite is also true. If you now, uh, uh, this is nothing to do with personality. Uh, you, you can easily be fooled to think that passion is about guys who are sanguines. No, it's absolutely nothing to do with with, with uh, personalities. You can be passionate and you are an introvert. You don't want to, to be seen out there, but you're passionate about what you want to do. I mean, you're passionate in, the, in obscurity. And if someone tries to come between you and your passion as an introvert, they will see how much extroverted you are. Now, that's passion. That's passion. And the thing is that each and every one of us has that particular thing. It's unique. In the very first pillow talked about uniqueness and each person has their own assignment on earth and once they find that they find their fulfillment they end up contributing to the overall picture of the world but once again we have to clarify that unction or passion is not something that is hereditary you don't inherit of course there's some places where i see uh, billy graham the son to Billy Graham is Franklin Graham doing exactly what Billy Graham used to do. Of, of course, that, 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 that's commendable. But generally speaking, passion is not hereditary. Even if you use the Billy Graham example, the way Billy Graham was passionate is, is totally different from the way Franklin Graham is passionate. Whenever each person has an assignment as they deploy their fullness, they also have a passion that accompanies it. And once again, we have to clarify this. It is something that is personal and available in each individual according to the measure of their uniqueness and their purpose here on the face of the earth. Passion is selfless. We've talked about this. Uh, it's not generating. You know, when, when you're passionate about yourself, that's no passion. That's just something else. You're selfish. But passion generates contributes, inspires, brings value, changes this world. It is so that we can have different types of passion. We're talking about the fullness of your glory. We, talk, we ought to realize that the passion we exude is not selfish. It's, it's for others. The passion that we're having is generating value for others. The nervous system of your calling. We're going to take a bit of time on this one. 
I find it hard to believe that you are able to come to this fullness of your glory without some level of banking on your passion and unction. What compels you to keep going when reality strikes? It is nothing but the passion that you have. In fact, when reality strikes, you're going to find a way because of the passion. If passion is not in the equation, what are you going to do? You're going to find an excuse. You're going to bench it. You're going to walk away and say, I don't care about this. Because, of course, you don't care. Because you're not passionate about it in the first place. Unction is what will tell you what you are doing is what matters no matter what feedback you receive. It is the unction that made Martin Luther King Jr. to do what he was doing. It is what made Muhammad Ali do what he was doing. It is what made Jesus Christ do what he was doing. In fact, the word, the word passion itself is famously linked to Christ when we talked about, when you talk about the passion of the Christ, death itself. So I'm going to tell you one thing. You've got to look inside. Passion is love beyond yourself. It is the internal force inside of you that embraces the benefits that others receive from your commitment and your cause. It is a, it is a driver of every high achiever. If you wanted to deploy the fullness of your glory, you will, of course, have got to bank on your passion. I don't see how I can be able to do this without being passionate about it. The same applies to you. So if you're looking for your own glory, personal glory, to shine on the face of the earth, I'm going to tell you this. Look for your passion. I mean, stop listening to those people who say, oh, these motivational speakers that are saying, oh, don't look for your passion and all that stuff. Listen, you are a passionate human being. You are created with emotions. There is something that matters to you. Find it. That's where your passion is. What makes you cry? What excites your laughter? What makes you wake up in the in the night until a, a, a problem has been solved? You've cracked it. That's your passion. Find it. Stay with it. Don't let it go. Even when it's tough and nothing is being generated, it's a, it's a process. It's growing. Stick there. Sooner or later, the Bible tells, do not grow weary in doing good, for in due season you reap. If you fail not tomorrow, we look at pillar number five. Until then, bye bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.